All right, KMR. We're going to talk some brap. We've got a uh, FD3S block in for service, blown apex seals, and I think you're always trying to avoid costly mistakes, and this is a costly rotary mistake. So let's, uh, let's talk about how we can avoid some of this stuff, and in this case, what this build is going to entail. So like many rotary engines, they get dropped off. Hey, low compression, don't know what happened. Uh, you know, customers only owned the car for about six months. They imported it from Japan. Um, so as we took it apart and we uncovered what would be unfortunate uh, detonation, and detonation is usually caused by a fuel delivery issues, detonation, too hot of air intake temp, bad tuning. Um, it's not an apex seal failure, it's a uh, recipe failure that leads to detonation. Um, so as we took it apart, this was more damage than the color, uh, customer expected. So we were like, okay, we gotta replace rotor housings, we gotta replace a rotor, potentially balanced, we're gonna do some bearings, might as well throw a street port on it. It becomes more of an involved build versus a simple rebuild um so you know just be aware you blow up some apex seals you buy a brand new car you get real nasty with it um it can be costly and i think that's where we get into how do we avoid this type of mistake um because apex seal failure ruins parts i said it wrong it's not apex seal failure detonation ruins apex seals which ruins parts so if you acquire a rotary car and it's at this point obviously going to be pre-owned or in many cases like this motor came to the US in a JDM car that was recently imported, um, just be aware it's probably not the ideal situation to go 100% full rev limiter um, maximum attack with a car that maybe you don't know the history on. Although this FD3S was imported, was basically bone stock, stock motor, stock turbo, stock computer. Um, you have to think about it in the aspect of there may be maintenance needed or variations in a car that comes from Japan versus a car that was originally in the US. And as we dug deeper, it became more obvious. The fuel system had not been maintenanced in years. It had not been maintenanced by the seller, the previous customer, or the new owner. Um, so fuel filters, injectors, um, fuel pumps, all were basically old, which you got to consider at that point when you're talking about something that might be 5, 10, 20 years old, it's going to be very difficult for it to operate at peak performance. So if you're asking for peak performance on old fuel delivery, you might be asking for a recipe for disaster. As we continued to dig, we realized the car being bone stock really had no uh, availability to monitor uh, what it was doing. There was no aftermarket gauges, no wideband, oil temp, water temp, fuel pressure, oil pressure, anything that could have actually given the customer uh, maybe or, or a tuner information as to uh, whether the car was operating at proper or peak performance. So having proper gauges, proper maintenance, um, especially when you buy a new old car. As we continued to talk, um, it came up that the importer had actually said to the new owner, hey, by the way, this car had been tuned for Japanese high octane fuel, which again, if you're not aware in Japan or many other parts of the world, even in the US in some areas, you have higher octane or lower octane premium fuels. So it's a really good chance this car was in Japan being ran on something like a, a 92, a 97, a 94, something that's a higher octane or different blend than what we had in the US. And without any way to monitor or know previous history, uh, just putting in fuel right out of the pump and then going to redline full load was a obvious recipe for disaster. Now, you could always consider other things, fuel slosh, um, potential tuning, air intake, ish, air intake temp issues, but the reality is um, with that knowledge of, hey, the computer's tuned for high octane, um, no fuel system improvements, upgrades, or maintenance, um, there was really no reason this car wasn't going to detonate. The Mazda OEM computer does not have any safeties in there. Um, and as 
the OEM parts uh, uh, get older, their performance drops, but our desire to reach peak performance, or especially if we buy a car um, and we're happy to own it, as this customer was, um, usually we're, we're trying to operate at peak performance. So costly mistakes to avoid if you're purchasing a Mazda RX-7, a boosted rotary, whether it's, it's said to be a fresh rebuild and ready to go, or it's a known older car with maybe unknown history, um, try to avoid uh, maximum attack right away. Check your fuel system, get some gauges on it. Um, even if it's a stock uh, Mazda FDE or Turbo 2, maybe get it on a dyno at a reputable shop and, and kind of go over the basic tuning aspects, your fuel pressure, uh, where the wide band's at, throw an EGT on it. Um, try to try to check it out because the older Mazdas, um, you know, if operated in bone stock condition uh, and everything's working great, they're extremely reliable. Um, but let's be honest, you know, 20 year old fuel pumps, uh, imported cars from Japan, unknown history. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of things to consider to avoid these types of recipes for disaster. In the end, it's going to be a nice rebuild. We're completely able to fix this stuff. It's it's just a couple more thousand dollars because we've got to replace rotors, rotor housings, and up to the customer on whether he wants to balance. We actually found a matching weight rotor, which was super lucky. So I think that's a wrap. You know, we're always happy to... Uh, take motors apart, rebuild motors, rotary service, rotor setup, parts you may need, just hit up KMR, hit up Mazda Tricks. That's what we're doing. We're, we're fixing, uh, you know, bad days with rotary engines so they can be good days again. That's a brat.